Have great weather. Man, I don't know where you are, but we have sun is shining. Pastor Jay's gonna jump in here in just a second and join us, but what a great day we are gonna have. Uh, I was going to ask you all, what, how cold does it need to get before you go ahead and put on a coat or you put on your jacket? Uh, I remember being a teenager and I would wait, I mean, as cold as possible. Uh, I was in middle school and Jay's dad would come and pick me up uh, for school and take me. He was my pastor when I, <laughs> so thinking about it, Jay and I have been together for <laughs> so long. <laughs> when I was in middle school, he would swing by and pick me up as he took his two sons, Jay and Jeff, over. We were all going to the same place and uh, I, I would get in the car and he said Amy how cold does it have to be before you put on a jacket and I would think no you got to wait as long as you can um, kids now they don't even want coats my kids just want to wear a hoodie all the time and I'll be freezing going you need <laughs> you need mittens <laughs> you need gloves and a scarf um, but this is a warm day we've got 80 degrees today here uh, in Kentucky so I'm excited about that but I was just asking you are you will you wait until it snows before you put on your coat or will you just go ahead and, and you are coat ready, ready, ready to put it on. Do you resist it for a long time or do you go ahead <laughs> and put it on? Let me, let me find this live and I can see who's on um, with us today. Let's see, I'll turn my volume down. Um, hello, Pastor Jay, how are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for joining us. We got uh, Linda Wah -wah. Francis is with us saying, hi, Amy, sweetie. Hello, Linda. Good to see you. Glad you're watching with us. Hey, if you're logging on, go ahead. Hit that share button. I know Pastor Jay will share for you. I already shared. You already shared? I'm a sharer. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I'm asking them what about um, how cold does it have to be before you wear a coat? <laughs> I said our kids will just wear a hoodie. They don't care about coats. Um, uh, I had a friend, Sally, who always wants to be warm, but she always forgets her coat. <laughs> so so you you might not like like to wear it, but uh, you put one on. You're, a, oh, light, you're yeah. a layered guy. I'm a light jacket guy. Yeah, you like, you'll start out in layers and just shed them through the You day. know, it's funny. I think about this time of year. I always think about when we were kids going to school. Yeah, me too. And That's you, what I just you, talked about. Your dad picking me up oh, in middle school. Oh, man. And your dad would be like, when, when are you guys going to wear a coat? He's like, it's like, it's 48 degrees outside. It's it's time for a coat. You, you hold off as long as you can because if you if you wear the if jacket to school, in. you got to tie it around your waist. Remember oh, that? Yeah. You have to tie your oh, jacket yeah. around your waist oh, when it's yeah. hot uh -huh. after school. So yeah. we wait as long as we can. Yeah. And uh, we've got a house full today. We love mm -hmm. all the activity I in the building. Fabian and Norma are here. Miss Helen is here working. Brandon's oh, yeah. doing a construction project in the okay. back room. Okay. Harlan's in the house. We're going to have a fun day today. Oh, good. And we're glad you joined us online today. Thanks for joining. The discussion of God's Word is where we get to Im, uh, really um, implement it. We like Put it into practice. We like to talk the Word. Man, we love to talk the Word. And we love Tuesdays. And we love you. So thanks for being on. Thanks for sharing the broadcast also. Yeah. Your shares use your influence to help help push the gospel out to more people. Yeah. So um, makes it a good day, doesn't it? It does. It <laughs> does make I like your tie. Oh, thank you. Look at you looking mm -hmm. all spiffy. Yeah. I uh, I can't measure up ever. I was going to try to save this to film in first and then wear it for a live, but I but couldn't wait. But it was wait. just too cute. <laughs> I just couldn't, you couldn't I wait. I couldn't wait to you wear it. You just couldn't wait. I wanted to see. This was an experiment shirt because my little sister Faith was uh, wanting me to... Um, order from Sheen. Sheen? Uh, yeah, they just send you advertisement. You all, the girls know what I'm talking about all the time on Facebook or Instagram. And you're, you don't know whether to order or not because it's so cute, but it's like $11.99. <laughs> so you're like, I don't know the quality of that. So I always would get to like the, the cart where it's time to buy and I would get so scared, like none of this is gonna work. <laughs> so I would like, you know, close that file. Um, so finally my little sister Faith said, Amy, cause she looks so cute in a dress. And I was like, where did you get that? She's like, oh, this is Sheen. And she goes, you have to try it. She said, half of your order will work for you. <laughs> And the other half, you just bless people you with. Just, you just yeah. give it away. Just, half of it will work. Well, so works. this might have been fourteen ninety nine. It works for us, <laughs> but it's cute. I was like, okay, half of it worked for me. Fabian is on a uh, he's on a roll. We're writing jingles for all kinds of companies. Oh yeah. So maybe he could come up with, with one Sheen? for Sheen. You know, it's like Sheen, order our sweatshop clothing. You know what I mean? <laughs> Guaranteed. Sheen. <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> just like a sword noise. Sheen. 
<laughs> Made in China. True, that's true. Yeah. Who knows? From China. From China. <laughs> you get mad when you order this stuff on Amazon from China and the sizes are wrong. so wrong. I know. That's why I was nervous about Just Jean saying. because this is a medium and I didn't know, am I an extra large? You yeah. know, or because, you know. Um, I like it when you talk about when, when, when you went, I went to Columbia. When you went to Columbia. I was in the airport in this awesome, we were in the, right outside, a beautiful leather store, I think. They were selling jackets. And I was like, ah. I thought, oh, that's so beautiful. And I went in and I was like, I think I tried on the larger. And my arm was so long and it, my shoulders, like I thought, oh, I'm an extra large in Bogota. You are an Amazonian <laughs> woman there. Where's a big and tall store <laughs> for girls here? <laughs> like I couldn't get they a are jacket very tiny, there. Tiny, tiny oh, people. Yes, mm. yes. They, are, they have little shoulders, you know, um, shorter arms than me. So I, yeah, I felt like, oh. I can't buy a jacket. <laughs> you always told me uh, you, that's why you like to shop at Ann Taylor because they size everything a size down, make you feel good about yourself. They are so smart. I, I mean, like <laughs> high end stores, and you can buy stuff there. You could just go to the clearance, like I do, and uh, sometimes they'll have the clearance off of the clearance, and um, and so you bought those two curvy jeans. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I told Jay. I said to make a, they had a size two jeans there, and they had the label curvy on them. And I thought after I bought and they fit. You know, I'm never a two. And um, it felt so and good. I, yeah, it felt so good. And I went home and I said, I love it. Um, Jay, I think curvy is a nice way of calling them husky. Yeah, the female husky. <laughs> they're the female version of husky. No, um, I think that's but, great. Yeah. Genius marketing. Yeah. So um, they used to do fashion shows in our church growing up and the boutique would come over and bring dresses and all the women loved to be a model in it and my mom would laugh because the clothes were so missized. I mean, they you could be a size 10 normally and you would wear a four. Oh, wow. And my mom would laugh because she was a, normally a six. You pay top dollar for and that. And she's like, how am I a zero at this store? Yeah. And so all the, you know, all the ladies loved buying clothes there because they're like, well, you know, I'm a six. <laughs> you, know, you can turn outside. You're really a nine. <laughs> but, but that makes you feel so good. Yeah, so that's why I like I like Ann Taylor sizing. <laughs> I'll be a two husky. <laughs> Kelly, Kelly Schultz says she was a 5X in France. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I tried on clothes in, uh, in when we were in Paris. I did buy some when we were Venice. in Italy, in Venice. You bought a little I red. Got some clothes. I, I got a red that. jacket. Yeah, I, remember that. I don't know what size they are though. I'll look at it and see how big am I in Italy. Well, that's I think they funny. just have giant sizes, like 38 and 40. Oh, you were close. They're European know. sizes. I'm like, this Maybe looks that good. doesn't offend me at all. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds giant. <laughs> I was a large number there. Oh, that's so funny. But we did in Venice, there was a beautiful red like a wrap jacket we saw in one of the big stores. Like, I don't know if we went by well, we saw it in Versace Rome. or in something. In Rome, on the bicycle. Yeah, and you saw, on, our, you, on our electric bicycle yeah, tour. Yeah, you saw, you saw this outfit. And then oh, when we were so in pretty. Venice. And then we were in Venice. Really, I thought it was just like a block away because yeah. I got, because I took a picture. I got the knockoff version in a little store of this big red wrap jacket that tied. And so Jay took my picture. I'm wearing the one I got for like. She just has to have. She had to. For like $30. And then there's one in the window. The the one mine is a replica of for like, what was it, you like 500 to, or something? You just had to have it, Amy. Yeah, you it might have, been, might have been like 1500 It was crazy amount of money. And I had one like that was Couldn't just pass so it up. similar. But mine was like thirty, I think thirty dollars. You look super cute today. Oh, oh that's thank where you. we met that Polish couple. Then they found out we were from uh, from uh, Kentucky, uh -huh. and they said, "Oh, bourbon? You have bourbon?" <laughs> no, we have no bourbon. Not honest. <laughs> no, no bourbon. <laughs> no bourbon. <laughs> oh, good. Kelly's on uh, with us again. I saw her on uh, Spirit Filled Prayer with you. Hi, Kelly. My good baby, we've missed you. It's been we too have. long, hasn't it? We it need has, to get down has. to Florida. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have such a great show today. We really, really love this topic. 
And Luann's uh, today's on. Gonna Good be to a see you, Luann. I see uh, Donna's on. I saw Donna and Luann saying yesterday they received that word of healing in their bodies, and I hooked up and agreed with you. We are the healer. Before we the get Lord. too spiritual, I have, a, I have a request. Okay. Because I, I, I want to plead my case again. I want to find out real quick if you don't mind a comment. Are you leftover eater or are you not? Oh, I heard, I caught the tail end. Of yeah, that. because last night at, at midnight, I warmed up the little Chinese mi, mi, mi fong noodles. I ordered mi fong the other day and the man on the phone argued with me. You could tell he was not of the same culture of the restaurant. You know, I'm used to, you know, my, my Chinese ladies there helping yeah. me. And so this was just- Some a, American guy. Some American guy and I ordered me fung noodles. And he corrected me and said, oh, I'm sorry we don't have those. Do you mean my fung noodles? <laughs> I was like, no, I mean the <laughs> rice noodle. I want the me fung noodles. And, uh, and I had just, did I order that right after I you had? Did. I have four stitches in my mouth right now. Wednesday, they pulled a tooth. And I mean, it took I me and Dr. Dust, Dustin and like two other people on top of me to get <laughs> this tooth out of my head. I mean, my roots are so long. They go all the way down to the nerve line, right? So I have extra Novocaine on, and I mean, I don't even think I'm fully back. <laughs> I mean, I, I have four stitches in it, which makes it really weird to eat. So, yeah, so I really wanted those noodles. I wanted that guy. So I got my, my Mi Fung, which he called My Fung noodles. And you got to finish them for me? I, you know, because it bothers me to uh -huh. throw away food or to waste anything. I don't mind to give people money. I don't mind to buy stuff. I just really don't like to waste. Yeah. And, um, and maybe that, I hope that's not a poverty mentality. I just don't like to waste. Yeah. And my father didn't raise us to waste. Yeah. We, whatever we bought, we ate and we did, you know. And you so, got leftovers with you. Steve saying, I love my leftovers. Thank you. Melissa says uh, she loves leftovers. Her husband is thank not. Thank you. Donna's with you. I eat leftovers. Ryan, for sure. Leftovers are okay with me. Happy birthday, Ryan. No, but Ryan. here's what I want to know. Is it, is it okay? Are there some non-leftover people out there? Or is it just my family? Because I'm living with three don't eat leftovers. Over people. Well, I've had leftovers all week because oh. I ordered the large amount of wonton soup. To purposefully have leftovers. Yes, because I, I, I can't. And why you even had leftovers of the mefung is because I couldn't chew up the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> or there wouldn't even been that leftovers. I just eat all my food. <laughs> the chicken was getting so caught I used, in my tooth. I tube. used a little bit of mi fung noodles uh -huh. and a little bit of the lo mein noodles, and I just warmed them both up was and made a plate. Was there lo mein in there, too? Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh. So Who knows where that came from? <laughs> when did we have <laughs> I try to eat a low carb <laughs> diet, but my family. Not with me. We are high carb. The rest of the family carbs, is all bread carbs. and noodles. Oh. And so the, 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 if you all would eat your own leftovers, it would take away that temptation. Yeah. Because I really don't I want to eat right. the carbs. I really mm, yeah. just don't want to waste that food. Yeah. We don't have chickens and we don't have a dog. So we don't have anybody else oh. to give the food to. Yeah. You know what we have now? What do we have now? When I was driving down my driveway yeah. today, there was a little turtle. And oh. we never had turtles. And he wasn't scared. His head was up and he was looking. At, I was so tempted to be Grandpa Bailey. And pick him up? Pick him up. Put him in a box? Put him in my car and oh. just be like, oh, after school, my kids will love us. Oh, <laughs> we have yeah. a turtle. That turtle. <laughs> but I didn't. I just thought, that's cute. I'll let him be. You, you know? let him be. I let him be. Yeah. He we was just cute. watch for him. Don't yeah, run over. Yeah, he was like brown and orange. Oh, good. Mm. Isn't that sweet? I'm glad that blesses you, you so much. Have you seen a turtle at our house before? I have not. Yeah. I thought it was cute. We don't have water close to We it. have rabbits. Mm -hmm. And surprisingly, we also have foxes. We have foxes. So I don't know if the rabbits. And one time I saw a white weasel. A weasel? That Lake swears I didn't see, but I saw it. And one time we had a tiny owl on our mailbox, like a little white snow owl. It was, it was so beautiful. We, have, we had the gutsiest squirrel I've ever seen <laughs> in my life. We had a squirrel that got up in our attic.
and yes. uh, was the gutsiest squirrel. He'd play in our yard, and I'd shoot at him with a pistol, and he'd mm. just stare at me like, yeah, you missed again. Yeah, you know? and I got that on video. <laughs> Jay, with his pistol, shoots me, called him Lucky, because he lived on top of, in our attic, right we above didn't our bed. I called him Lucky. I you called him Lucky. Called him lucky. And he, I mean, when you, right when you were going to sleep, you could hear something rustling, like slide down your wall, and I was like, and it sounded giant like a person, so we figured out, oh, that's a squirrel. And so, um, so Jay, I have a video of him. I'll have to find it. And he, he shoots the Lucky with the pistol. And Lucky jumps and it hits the leaves behind him. And he just stood up and like just stared you down, like wasn't scared, wasn't scared at all. Tanya gave the best response. So Chris is like me, full of wisdom, okay. eats all the leftovers. Okay. But she doesn't like leftovers yeah. because she was forced to eat them all of her life. Well, I was forced to eat them all my life, but I, I, I still, uh, still can't like stand to throw stuff away. Yeah. So yeah. maybe we just need to get us a chicken bucket and take it to Sally's house. <laughs> yeah, I should have shot it, Ryan said, I'm the better <laughs> shooter. <laughs> It's true, Good Ryan. memory, Ryan. It's true. Good memory. It is. It is true. <laughs> too, too, too funny. Oh, that's funny. It's funny what, what we're talking about today. What moves people? You know, have you ever heard a song? Uh, uh, you know, we know that movies and, and different situations use music to really stimulate or to move you in a certain direction that they need you to go. Can you hear a song that takes you right back to a place in your life? Or I can remember every time I hear the song, Going Through the Desert w with a Horse with No Name. Is that the right title? <laughs> I you know was, I've been through the <laughs> desert <laughs> on a horse with no name. That I think of my mom, that song like unnerved my mom. She would be like, what? Not that song. She just couldn't stand that song so every time that I hear a clip of that song you know in a store or somewhere I think of my mom and how much she was like I don't like this I don't get this song why is this song it must have been out when she was in high school and she was like I don't like this <laughs> so I hear my mom all the time with that one do you have a song that that is like that no know? but I remember the infomercial for those throwback songs you know oh, yeah. and, and they would only play the little the the little clips. three second uh -huh. clips and uh -huh. so when I they would still wreck time life yeah and do time all life, those, you know. uh, uh -huh. so when you when you when I hear that song, uh -huh. you know, it was followed by sunshine go away today. And then the next song was please remember something, you know, so it's funny how they and just the guys were like hippies and they had like the hippie <laughs> yeah, band yeah. and they would do rock and they'd go turn it up. <laughs> turn it up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, that. Uh -huh. I used to know um, if I hear like there was one uh, like a uh, more romantic song when I can't get if I had one of those, I could sing them like sing 10 them in a row. Yeah. yeah, I could. I know exactly what you're talking about. Well, YouTube the old time. Life yeah, videos. the old time uh, lifetime. On Spirit for Prayer this morning, we uh, we watched a little Jim Gaffigan on foliage. Oh, I missed that. Yeah, part. it was really oh, funny. I'll watch it from because the our, our maple out front is starting to turn already. Is it red? Yes, I and it's because it's, it's it's dry, it's, you know. We're not, so mm -hmm. Shannon Water says we're getting rain on Thursday, Thursday, so that'll be good. We need a big okay. rain. The cows need rain. We okay. need rain. I'm tired of looking at brown grass. Yes. I'm getting ready to go paint my lawn. Yeah, everything is brown. And right? so we're um, we want the foliage to stay up yes. for a little while. Yeah. If it's mm -hmm. if it's all dry and mm -hmm. droughty, mm -hmm. the leaves fall off. You mm -hmm. don't get to enjoy them. Yeah. It's so. True. It's true. We need water. So we enjoyed about three minutes of, of Gaffigan talking about foliage. Uh -huh. Is, that, is that why you said we had we had tickets to him? Yeah. Him? Did they refund you? I money? don't have a clue. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> that was a long time ago. I don't know. Yeah. Well. I have trouble keeping up with those things. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> it's all right. Um, we're talking about what, what moves you today. Um, Broadcasting Network. Debbie's saying that uh, we miss you, pastors, at Faith Broadcasting Network. Oh, we miss you as well. It's been oh, a long sweet. time. I Hi, thought Debbie. we would get to, to get down to um, to Jordan's wedding mm -hmm. or to Faith's wedding, but we miss Jordan's wedding. It looks like we're going to miss Faith's wedding yeah, too. Yeah, so Faith we, is end of November, end of November. And the wedding, Jordan's uh, wedding looked beautiful. So congratulations to Brooklyn and Jordan, and they make a beautiful couple. We miss Florida. So. Yeah, it is. What what a great guy. April. God's That's moving the longest there. in a while. I mean, I I spoke there in May. Oh, well, for hey, my, for hey. like a tea party. At summer went with me. There great. you go. Yeah, well, it was great. Great time. Mm -hmm. Great time. Mm -hmm. We'll be back, in Florida. We'll Summer, be back. Summer just loves it. Our daughter, Florida, is her home. <laughs> like she's so happy anytime. She doesn't want me to go without her. She 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 resonates in Naples. <laughs> we cohabitated since 2019. <laughs> we did. So it feels weird. 2023 did not go. Yeah, it's but true. Uh, we'll be we'll be back. Yes, absolutely. Um, 
I, I know I was talking with someone that was saying, oh man, their feelings, their if you wake up in the morning and you just feel um, amazing, I mean, you feel like the word is working for you and, and because of your mood, you know, I, I can do anything because Christ, Christ strengthens me. And then we were laughing some and then the day you feel like you wake up in a funk and, and you just feel like you're in a sea of sadness and you don't know why. And it, and it makes it hard to stir your faith up and really, is God moving today? Yeah. How, does he remember me? Has he forgotten me? And, and, you know, just because our feelings go up and down, you know, we are not to be moved by what we feel. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's what we just want to strengthen you today. Yeah, we all have feelings, but feelings aren't going to have us. Mm. Yeah, there are <clears> days <throat> that are up. There are days that are down. But we can remain steady. That's why there's so many scriptures that talk about being steadfast yeah. on the word of God or hold fast mm. to your confession of faith. To hold fast means you got to get a good grip on it. Hold on to your faith because there is an opposition. There are things coming to take it. There's situations. There's pressure the enemy wants to pull on you to see if he can get that word out of you, out of your heart, out of your mouth, because you're going to have exactly what you're saying. So it takes a discipline on the inside, even on the bad days to say, I'm more than a conqueror Amen. through Christ. Even when you don't feel like it, you can talk yourself right into a good day. Uh, you Pastor Mark says you got to get a grip on your lip. Yeah, that's right. Get a grip on your lip. Um, you know, um, I uh, was thinking about how powerful music is. And if you're if I'm having a, a funky bad day, and in our in our first point, just being that our feelings can't move us. Say you're having a bad day, mm. saying your feelings are bringing you down. I will get in the car and I will turn on praise and worship, and I will crank it up because I know how powerful music is. Mm. Even I mean, even if you're just trying, maybe something tragic happened. Even if you're just trying to get yourself back to a good place, you know, you might put on just a fun song. Maybe you put on that song Happy. <laughs> you know, maybe you put on Don't Worry, Be Happy. Maybe you put on on just something that gets your brain off the negative to the positive. And then, then I would move right on over into praise and worship and just start magnifying God because it changes the atmosphere. It'll change you. Um, and you know, if I've had a hard day, I'll put on something funny. I'll make myself laugh. I'll put on a funny movie or a, a funny video. Even if you just watch a clip of it, it it'll change. Um, you know, it'll change that mood, that attitude, and you can start, um, you can start getting happy again. Um, I thought about a movie that Summer and I like, Selena. It's the story of a Spanish singer that passed away. I was in high school when she passed away. I think it was around um, maybe 94 that she passed. So I might have been a freshman in high school. Do you remember the Spanish singer? She I remember said, it, but I, don't, I, don't, I wasn't. Yeah, you know, into like, it. No. Well, uh, it's a beautiful story, and it's so uh, tragic. It's not a spoiler alert. I mean, it's a true story. She passed away too early, like it, it, she was only 23 years Plane old. Plane crash? Um, no, her. Yeah. it was the president of her fan club. Oh, wow. Uh, went crazy. And oh, she was murdered. She was murdered. Oh, horrible. Yeah. Um, but the Netflix series, even though that's so terrible, is so cute about her family. Uh, it's really like a family life growing up and how mm. she became famous. So, and, and it's pretty clean, so you could watch it with, with your teenage kids for sure. You're married to the president of your fan club, so, oh, so that's good. I'll, that's do, I'll do my best not to ever murder you. <laughs> Thank you. And, um, and so why I said that was there's a song that every time they played this beat, a fight would break out in the mm. audience and, and how powerful music is to move you. It's like to manipulate you into feeling something. So they realized, okay, let's put this slow song right before and then we'll go right into this slow song after it. Just so like the, the fight, whatever that rhythm was, it got people like riled up. Um, my brother Luke, I was just texting him this morning and, and he said, in on the football team, you know, because he played freshman through uh -huh. uh, his senior year in high school at Russell Independent there and, and Russell, Kentucky. And and he said he loved it because, like, especially on a away game on the bus, all the guys, and you all might have played sports, so you know this, they would play ACDC, that thunder. <laughs> Is that the right song? <laughs> I, I don't know. I think they did Thunderstruck. Yeah, Thunder. And he said, uh, and, that, and then they would all just like bang their head to that music. And it got them so riled up and their blood pumping. They were ready to run out of that bus and crush somebody. <laughs> I think you need like a theme song when you come out to do your, your, uh, your tea parties. I we do? could come out to, oh, 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 that'd be really fun for you. You've been Thunderstruck. There comes Amy just oh, no, running that's not my song. Oh, that's not, your that's song. not my. No. Your mom let me come out the very first ladies' <laughs> meeting. 
I ever did. And my mom was still alive, so my mom got to see this. I probably graduated Rama 01. So I think this this could have been spring of 02. Mm. Jay's mom let me uh, come and speak at her ladies' meeting in Lake Seaton, and I had a leopard suit. Let me guess. I, no, 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 don't, don't guess. Let me guess. I want to say, I want to say it. I want to say it. And I had my leopard. Um, I had a leopard. My mom found a leopard suit for me, skirt, jacket. I had leopard matching shoes on. Of course, you on. Did. Of course I'm you sure did. you know my Bible. This was leopard all through Rama. Of course. Leopard purse. I was leopard, and I and I and your mom let me walk out to the song. Uh, da 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 da. da. And it said, man, I feel like a woman. <laughs> I knew it. Shania. <laughs> yes. Your mom let me. I mean, the crowd, like, everybody got up. Like, it did something to the, the it crowd. It was a they ladies' were, meeting. It was a ladies' meeting. And they felt, I mean, we didn't worship to that song. I'm not saying that it got crazy in there or anything. I'm just saying that, you know, it it it, it riled up the crowd because they weren't expecting that song. And it, and it was so fun, yeah. <laughs> then I preached about, you know, the... <laughs> The benefits of being a woman sure for God. <laughs> <laughs> it's now the transgender theme song. No. Man, I feel like a woman. I won't let them steal <laughs> that from me. No. No. No, no, no. You're hilarious. Um, but why, why I said all that is because, you know, we have to be careful what we let in. And, and, and this is one I always keep. This is Proverbs 4, 23. It says, guard your heart. It really starts out really strong. Above all, mm. guard your heart for out of it flows the issues of life. So, you know, be careful what you're allowing in because it's moving you in one direction or the other. You know, we have friends and we've told you this before that they'll come in and say, I've been so depressed for three days. And I've been like, well, what have you been doing? You know, what, what have you been praying? You know, did you put on your worship? And they would say, no, I've just been watching horror movies, you know, for the last week. And I think, well, that's the wrong spirit. You're not guarding your heart. You know, above all, don't let a spirit of fear and it's going to bring anxiety. It's going to bring depression. You know, we, above all what we do, we watch what we're putting in. Mm. And even if your emotions, your feelings are trying to drag you down, what you're going through, the pressures of life, you can pick yourself back up again. You guard your heart and say, no, no, let me just, let me just be like uh, what Paul said out of, um, and, I, and I turned my Bible there over to Acts 20. In verse, you all know this one, verse 24, it says, but none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, uh, so that I may finish my race with joy in the ministry which I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Now, now none of these things, we know Paul had went through many trials, many tribulations, many storms, shipwrecks, left for dead. He had been stoned. He, his feet had been broken. But none of these things were able to pull him off of his faith or the revelation he had of who he was in Christ. So that's, that's our motto that we've taken on. Jay and I have quoted this a lot recently. Smith Wigglesworth motto was that Brother Hagin said, I've made this the motto of my ministry. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm only moved by what I believe. And Jay has added this line onto it, and we all say it now, and we believe God. So your circumstance, the mm. pressure, your feelings, the bad funk you've been in, someone's mistreated you, all of these things, none of these things can move me off the word of God or what he has promised me. I won't allow it. Amen. You got to get bold about it. Yeah. You got to already decide I'm not moving off the promises of God. Sometimes I feel like I talk too much and you get sleepy. No, you, <laughs> not at all. Not at all. <laughs> at night I tell him a story and he's asleep. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, not at all. Oh, good. I know you've already had a show today. So. No, we're we're we're. Uh, I'm letting you lead the lead the way today. Well, that's what I, I wanted to say. I wanted to say that about, and I thought it would be funny to talk about all the music and, and different things. You know, the world says, be moved by everything. Be moved by, you know, the commercials that, uh, you know, whatever moves you. you know, there's a song uh, that said, let the rhythm move you. You know, they want to move you in a direction. The enemy wants to manipulate your life and make you feel highs and lows. But when you can get settled and say, no, none of these things are going to move me. I'm steadfast. I'm solid. My grandma Bailey, which Jay says I'm most like Thelma. Yes, she is Thelma. Um, he, and I can say this about her. Living she, in Pam's body. 
<laughs> I look like my mom and, and I act like my grandma. Family. That's it. And what a combo. <laughs> what a combo. It's a winning combination. <laughs> and, and, I get asked like twice a week, does Amy have any sisters? I'm like, she does, but they're oh, all married. Oh, you know? yeah. oh man, they had a short window with Jenny <laughs> recently, recently. She had no idea. Jenny, you didn't if know. She held Jenny. out. No, we're just she, kidding. She had no idea. We many. love Josh and we love all his we family. Do. Hey, they, they've become partners of Stick With The Plan. So great. When we gained Josh, we gained a whole other family. They're wonderful. Wonderful. And going to my dad's church. Isn't that cool? It's wonderful. Cool. So, yeah, so Faith's married, Jenny's married. Yep. Uh, if you'd have had a hundred sisters, I could have married them all off. Really? Yep. Yeah. We like the combination of Pam and Thelma. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. We do. Thelma was very prim and proper. Yeah. Thelma would wear high heels in the house, and she never did anything off color or said anything that wasn't mm -hmm. right. And occasionally she would just refer to others as them people. And so I just love it. And just, just uh, you know, she just had a great way about her, you know. She just was real sweet. And she was so steady on the word. Yeah, I mean, that's what, that's what my Jesus. point I was going to get to. She taught us there's never a good reason to miss Sunday morning. You might miss, you know, I might be on vacation, you might have to work. But she's like, that's not a good reason, you yeah. know. And, and I like that. I like that kind of uh, motto in life. There's never a good reason. On Sundays, you, you're meant to be in church. She made that dedication. I'm so glad she did because it brought my grandpa Absolutely. into the fullness of faith. Yep. You know, Howard Bailey became a great man of God. Yep. Their children are all in ministry. Their children's children. Yep. We're all serving and in church and, 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 and got great gifts that yep. God uses in the kingdom. And, and each unique and different. But what did she taught us? You put God first. You know, she no was, matter the storm wonderful. of life. Even older in life, she would love it when we would just come up and visit and talk the word. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just love the word of God. Uh -huh. And all of her kids in the ministry, grandkids in and the ministry. And you could surprise her. And she always had on pantyhose and high heels. Always. And a necklace and her pearls. You see where Amy gets it from. I, I, she comes no, by you, No, please don't surprise me. Never surprise me. <laughs> Not my, not my grandma that way. <laughs> so when Grandma Bailey, the yoga pants. When, she, when she was starting to disperse her goods, she came across her, her mink stall and she, she knew, I have to give it to Amy. Oh, Amy, yeah, Amy I got is that most early. Yeah, me, I didn't so. wait. I didn't have to wait for that. She gave me that in high school because I was going to dances all the of course, time honey, and you, I was wearing gowns and I needed you know, a, a coat. And so... Uh, and she had so many, she couldn't wear them all on Sunday morning. So, <laughs> Do you still have that one? Oh, yeah. Oh, you haven't given it away? Well, who would I? Summer or anybody. Well, it. she Summer still lives in my oh, house. I got so you. I got <laughs> it's you. Still, as long as Summer's with me, it's still in the closet. I got you. I, got you. Yeah, I never good. said I don't see it in a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And my cousin Courtney and I got the long. Let's go out fancy this winter just okay. so you can pull it out. Okay. We should probably talk about the word. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I got lost talking about grandma. I miss her so much. That was fun to talk about her. But she was one that, you know, no matter what trouble came her way, they went through things. People didn't even know it because she was so steady and she just kept her composure and her class. And, and she just would always tell me, Amy, we're just going to trust God. And, um, you know, she's one, I think we felt connected because her mom passed away at the same time mm. in her life as my mom did. And I remember being little before my mom even passed away. She got uh, the last letter her mom had written her out of her jewelry box and she read it to me. And her mom was um, a preacher in the 40s, Ida Mae Cottle, when no one else was. And I remember the day and it's so odd and, and we were rarely with my grandma Bailey much alone. But I was there like she had picked us up after school and we were at her house waiting on my mom or, and dad to get out of an appointment or something. And, and she brought this and she read it just to me. And it was about a vision that I, her mother had had about um, uh, what God had called her to do. And she saw a lifeboat and she was reaching out with her hands and she was pulling people into the lifeboat. And, and, and the Lord revealed to her, this is, this boat is on its way to heaven. Your job is to get many in the boat as you can. And that's when the call to ministry dropped on her in her life so that she could go and do and, and, and pull more people into the boat. And, and, and I think it's neat that my grandma Bailey read that to me because I think about that vision. It makes me start to cry every time. Praise Amen. the Lord. And, and our next point just being that we're fully persuaded mm. in the Word of God. I mean, Paul got to a place where he had to say, um, 
and, and, I, and I like this. I, I went to Romans 8 last night, and, and I think you'll like the second point so much. And Summer was in my room, and she said, Mom, I love Romans 8. And I said, your dad and I do too. It's like the greatest hits. <laughs> Paul's greatest hits are, are written right there. And, um, and we were reading this. I think you'll like this, Jay, because of, um, of what he says here. Um, and this is 8 Romans. I'm in X. I'm in Acts 8. Sorry about that, guys. Let me turn over one more book. You know, I, I was listening to Brother Hagin, and he had a woman that was in the prayer line, and she was a minister, and uh, she came up for healing. And he said, um, you know, he was really moved because he thought, this is a minister. She knows God. Uh, I really want her to be delivered from this. And she was having internal pain in her body. And so she came up and he said, I laid hands on her and said, in the name of Jesus, be healed. And she felt around for the pain. And she said, no, 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 I still got the pain. Do it again. Pray again. And he said, there's a major line of people. And, um, hmm. and he has to lay his hands. He goes, because he said, now, usually I wouldn't. Someone says that, but he said, nah, I'm engaged with, her. I want mm -hmm. her to get this. Mm -hmm. I lay my hands on her. Now be healed in the name of Jesus. And uh, she said she felt around for the pain. No, no, no. I still got the pain. I still got it. I didn't get it. Do it again. So he says, be healed in the name of Jesus. And he, and he felt around and he, and she said, no, no, no. I still feel it. I still feel it. It's still there. Do it again. He said, no. And he, and he moved on to the next person. And he went and he said, and everyone else in the line gets healed. And she sits down and he, and he tells her, he said, now, do you have to feel it before you'll believe it? And she said, yeah, I'll believe it when this pain is gone. And he said, why would you need it then? You, you don't need to believe it then. You'll already know it. You need to believe it now. And, and she said she could never get over her feelings mm. to receive that healing. Mm. So even though this seems like a light topic today, like Amy, you're just saying, don't be moved. I'm saying if you'll get over your feelings today, you'll experience a healing. If you can let the word of God, this be fully persuaded and that this is true more than what you're feeling, what you have experienced in life, what the past has brought you, that this, that this word is so true that, that you, it, it will be more powerful to you than, than what you are just feeling, what mood you're in, what, what the deception is on your life. This is what Paul said that I wanted to read to you, and I think this will be powerful for us today. This is 8 in verse, um, I can't miss in my place, 38 and 39. Here we go. It says, I am persuaded mm. that neither death nor life nor angels nor um principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor debt, nor any uh, created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Now, I never really have seen this. And I was reading an old sermon by Charles Spurgeon. Am I okay? Honey? You're great. Okay. Um, I was reading an older sermon and he went through every, not, not death, mm -hmm. not the fear of death. Mm. He said, now the sting of death has been taken away. Mm. So don't be moved by that, mm. uh, nor life, nor how great your life is that you're experiencing that that can make you think that you're not a part of God anymore that um, you know that that could separate you that something good some people believe if you're not suffering you're not in the will of God that's not true the blessings on you that nor angels nor principalities nor power so there's no angel that can separate mm -hmm. you from this no devil that can um, nothing um, things present nor things to come so there's nothing that's happening uh, right now that could take you or should move us because he said I'm persuaded mm. I know what Christ has mm -hmm. done I know the goodness that he has for us I'm persuaded in this and and that encouraged me that there's nothing that can happen right now in this present time that can move me off of this goodness mm. I, I like that, Lord, that's that he word. loves me yeah. he loves me if God loves you he is love oh man that's the strongest bond we can know nothing happening right now can move me off of that revelation and then it says then the things that are to come nothing Nothing coming can take me off or could right. separate me. Right. No, 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 no. I've, I'm, I'm persuaded. I know this revelation of love that God has for me. And I started thinking about that last night. I thought, wow, what a strong bond. Yes. 
You know, I love thinking about what held Jesus up on Calvary, what held him up there. It, it was it wasn't the nails. It wasn't any rope. Mm. It, it was the bond of love for Amen. you and I that held him up there. So this same bond that kept Jesus on the cross for you and I, this same love, uh, Romans uh, went on in chapter five and says it's been shed abroad in your heart, been shed abroad in my heart. So this this wonderful, strong love, we can't be separated from it. Mm. God is love. It's in us and it makes us immovable in our call and what God's asking us to do. It, it will help us to be this fully persuaded mm -hmm. uh, that Paul was on mm -hmm. this revelation. Immovable. Immovable. Steadfast. Steadfast. Immovable. We, we've, we've taken on this word all year long. We even have church merch that says unstoppable. It really does. When you're fully persuaded in, in the word of God, his promises, you're unstoppable. Why? Because we're fearless and we're full of faith. We, we know this. We know in whom we believe. And, and I love thinking about getting a revelation, even a new revelation of the love of God Amen. for us. Yeah, to to get off the roller coaster. Yeah. And to get on the highway of holiness unto God, to get off of the ups and the downs, moved always by well, what I'm feeling today, and oh yeah, that's man, it. To get off of that. Yeah. And get to off just of that. get on. I'm with God. God's with me. He loves me. He's called me. Mm -hmm. He's anointed me. Yeah. Yeah. It puts you in a steady place. A steady. Right? Yeah. So it, it, it really, uh, again, is a sign of spiritual maturity. It's a sign of I, I'm, I'm drawing closer to God. Uh -huh. I'm not going to be moved. And yeah. when the enemy figures out that you're not moved by every attack he brings against your life, he'll know that he's not winning, right? right? And so if you'll move off of what God's asked you to do every time he brings an attack, well, then he'll bring another attack tomorrow. Yeah, he wants he'll, to separate you. That's it. Because you said it perfectly, because that next verse said, nor height nor depth. I never mm. thought about that. No, your greatest high mm. can't separate, or, or the greatest low. No. Your most depressing day, that love of God is still with you, still, still bonding you to him and his promises telling you that revelation, the revelation that God loves me is so powerful. The, one of the greatest revelations that Jesus brought to the earth was that God is our father. Yes. Right. No man had ever called him father until. Oh, that's good. And so when that's Jesus right. shows up, that's right. they're like, Master, teach us to pray like you. Mm -hmm. And he said, when you pray, you're now praying to your father. What yes. Daniel never prayed that way. David never yeah. prayed that way. Abraham never prayed that way. Yeah. They just knew him as God, Elohim. Mm -hmm. But now Jesus shows up and he knows him as Abba Father. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a depth of revelation. They didn't have, every believer must let the Holy Spirit pour this into their hearts so that yeah. they know. Because yeah. when you know that God is your Father, you'll know His love for mm -hmm. you, His provision for you, yeah. and the rest of the revelation that Jesus gave unto us. When Jesus yeah. said, if we being natural or carnal know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more yes. does our Father in heaven know yes. how to give good things to those who ask Him, right? Yes. That our Father is, as 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 Paul, uh, you know, um, elaborates often mm -hmm. uh, of all the things that our Father has bestowed upon us in our yeah. redemption. Or as James says in James 1.17, every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from above yeah, from the like Father that. of lights yeah. in whom there is no variation, no, not even a shadow of turning. Turn. Right? It's in his character. It's who he is. He's the giver of good things. Mm -hmm. And the gospel we preach is the gospel of good news. Good news. And, and so to, to never let the enemy move. What moves you? Is it going to be the opinion of man? Yeah. What moves you, right? Is it going to be? Come on. Is it going to be materialistic yeah. endeavors, right? Yeah. That, oh, I'll be happy when I have a better house. I'll be happy. Mm -hmm. Listen, if you're going to be happy when you have a better, you'll never be happy. Ooh. You told me last night there's three keys, and the second key you said is it is a choice. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a choice. And the only reason why I didn't go there today is because I was preaching the wrong, that's the one that comes out Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> I preached this awesome message last night and I looked at my notes and I was like, oh, that will be the live next week. <laughs> You're so funny. I've been sitting here confused for half an hour. Why were you looking at me like that? Because I was wondering when we we're going to get to the point. I'm like, that was so good last night. I'm going to keep waiting on, 
a little text message today would have been good. But hey, hey, we're going a different direction Hey, today. you got the outline, honey. I uh, sent it to the whole media uh, team. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> I have to start reading those text messages. <laughs> well, I can remember this story. Okay, I'm young, pregnant. Got, I'm pregnant with, like, you're owning Giovanni's. We uh, just got in our house, uh, moved out of the basement. The Lord had given us this awesome house. We're under financial pressure. I'm pregnant. You know, when you're first pregnant, you're so tired and nobody knows you're pregnant. You know, it's kind of sad that you, you wait, you know, you want to wait through the first trimester as long as you can usually until you, um, until you say that you are um, expecting. And so I was trying to wait as long as I could. And you're, I was nauseous, tired. Ugh. And I remember it was raining outside and I was scheduled to work the cash register. And so I laid down on the couch and I didn't mean to, but I fell asleep. <laughs> And Jay calls me and says, Amy, why aren't you at Jim? Why aren't you at our pizza restaurant? You're supposed to work tonight. You're on cash register. And I was like, oh, I looked outside. And I was like, oh, honey, it's raining outside. <laughs> it's storming awful out there. And I don't think I can come in. And he said, I don't care if it's raining. You're on the schedule. Come in. And, and I've always used that for an example to me that at the schedule, the work schedule, it's true whether it's snowing, raining, you're expected to be there. The word of God hold on, works hold on. whether it's Amy, raining Amy, or snowing. You own the place, <laughs> Amy. <laughs> You know, waitress, you own her. <laughs> but it I was raining outside. I let my feelings dictate to me. Oh I'm gosh. making a baby. <laughs> the couch felt so good. You know, it's like, I, I can't. He couldn't want me to come in. There's someone else that can do that. But but I'll think about that because I, I love Jay's response. It's like, so what? It's raining. And I flipped it for good in my life. Mm. And, and knowing as simple as we know that two plus two is always four, whether the sun's out or it's raining, whether I'm in a storm, whether I'm having a good day or a bad day, the truth is two plus two is always four. What if we were that absolute with the word of God? No matter what I'm feeling, no matter the pain in my body, by his stripes, I know he has sent his word and healed me and delivered me from all my destruction. I mean, what if that, what if I was so confident? Just like that. And that's the way we live. That's what we're talking about today. Letting none of these things move us, being fully persuaded like Paul was. We saw what he said about Abraham in Romans 4. Amen. Being fully persuaded, not wavering at the promise. When, when it was contrary to hope he could be a father, he hoped anyway. Beyond his natural reasoning and intellect and what everything in nature was showing him throughout his whole life. And, and, you know, regardless to that, he was able to stir himself up. He said, you know, being and being fully convinced, being fully persuaded. He was strengthened in the faith, giving glory to God. It's like we always say, turn it up, man. When you're feeling down, when you've been low and you need a boost, you need a bump, you need some encouragement, get on the praise and worship. Turn it up loud in your car, in your bedroom, in your home. Change the atmosphere, change your mood. Get believing God again. Get your faith strong again. Give glory to the Lord. Start singing the song. I'm going to see a victory. Start singing, you know, I, I believe you you, Lord, you know, and, and you'll see things change quickly, Amen. quickly in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I love the anointing. You can't talk about faith no. and how it works for you without him showing up. And it's wonderful. And not being manipulated or moved by our emotions or, you know, ever feeling like you're lost in a, in a sea of sadness. You don't ever have to live there. You know, I, Jay and I get to deal with different personalities all the time. And, and, and I can tell by someone's countenance, you know, are you in faith? Are you believing God? Are we standing on the word or, or are we just letting our feelings rule and the situation be greater than our God? Not anymore. And that's what I want to pray over, over us today. As you're watching this and viewing this, I never believe it's an accident. I always believe that these shows and we pray that we say what exactly the Lord needs to get to you and to your heart so that you can receive. What is the purpose to stick with the yes. plan? It's absolutely for you to uh, be encouraged in your walk with God. You know, we had a, uh, a great testimony uh, before I pray with you. I'll stir your faith up, a testimony that happened this past Sunday right here at Faith Church. And uh, our friend Erica Cook, I don't think she'll mind me sharing this because she texted it uh, 
and our group um, Spirit Filled Prayer, and yes. she said that uh, Sunday morning, Pastor Jay, he was preaching, and he felt a tingling in his hands, just a manifestation of the anointing of God. And I know when the anointing shows up, it's never just for you. It's never just for the minister to feel good. It shows up, that power of God, that anointing shows up to set someone free. And so um, I saw, and he began, he said, I, I feel the anointing in my hands, and he kept on preaching. And I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, I know when the anointing's here, when that shows up, it is for somebody. Show us who it is for. And when I asked the Lord that, he showed me a back in the lower three discs, almost looked blue to me, like he was highlighting them to me, uh, in the spine. And, you know, and, and then I also saw a, a place in someone's side um, that that was painful. And so I said those two things at the end of the service um, after Pastor Jay um, asked me to help him close. And uh, I uh, said that, and, and Erica stood up, and when we laid our hands on her, the power of God went right into her back, right into the place that I saw that. And I love that she was quick to testify the goodness of God and said, my back is healed. Man, that healing power, it's available right now. It'll go right into your place of pain uh, to cause that correction and the healing and the cure. That's our Jesus. That's how good he is. Uh, my friend Faye was the one with the pain in the side, and it left, I felt that anointing go right into her. Now, if you're in pain right now, put your hand on your body, wherever that pain is. If it's an elbow, a knee, maybe it's your neck. Maybe I'm speaking to your back today. Say, Amy, you describe the same thing. Well, he reveals things to heal them. And I believe that. There's not a distance in the spirit. If you were here today, uh, Jay and I would lay our hands on you and you'd be made well. It's just the great commission that's on us. Believers lay hands on the sick and they recover. So wherever the pain is, you put it on you. Put, put your hands right there and I'm going to speak a word and I'm also going to speak over your heart and mind today. You won't be moved or tossed to and fro uh, like, like little children or like a ship lost at sea, but you're going to stay course. Can you agree with that with me? Okay, let's get the healing right now. Lord, I thank you for your healing power. Oh, that flows into our viewers, Lord, uh, that wherever their pain is, Lord, that you see them, that, that their lungs are able to breathe just like you made them to. Lord, I believe from the top of their head, Lord, you touch those that are experiencing head pain, headaches have to go, migraines, never to return. That your healing anointing flows down into shoulders and elbows through wrists, no arthritis pain in the name of Jesus. Now Lord. flow right down into their body, even the pain on the side that we saw Sunday. Oh, but any of those suffering with that, be loosed and free this day in the name of Jesus. That the anointing saturate their back and every disc there, Lord, that there would be no more back pain, that you wouldn't uh, have them suffer all of their days. It wouldn't be right. Oh, that you are not the oppressor. That is the enemy. You are the healer. Jesus is the healer. So we command back, be whole, be healed, pain, go, cause of pain, be gone. We release you. We thank you, Lord, that pain goes in the name of Jesus. Now let that healing power flow down through, through their legs, Lord, into their knees, every joint, ligament, into knees. Oh, that they'll be uh, able to increase their movement. Oh, thank you, Lord. Lord, for getting the anointing, your power that goes right into their joints, right into their ankles, right down their feet, Lord. Oh, and make them whole in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm. Amen and amen. There's a name above every name. There's the name of Jesus that puts tumors on the run. Amen. The name of Jesus puts cancer out of your body and you're not moved by a diagnosis or a report, but we're steadfast on the word of God. We're not waiting on a feeling to be moved. We're moved right now because we we believe God. We believe, therefore we have spoken. Glory Amen. We God. believe. If you're believing for healing right now, I just shout, I'm healed Amen. in the name of Jesus. You need financial breakthrough? Oh, I'm free in the name. You need more joy today? I would just say, thank you, Lord. I've got the joy of the Lord. It is my strength. Whatever you need, I thank him for it right now. Go ahead and get it. Go ahead. Get happy right now. He's the answer. We've tapped into the anointing. I thank Thank the Lord. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. It was for freedom. Oh, that you brought liberty to us. And we're so grateful. Mm. We will not return back to our shackles. Oh, we'll stay free in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Hey, Lonnie, I'm glad you jumped on with us. He's always encouraging to us. Luann's been preaching so well. Amen. I think she said earlier, garbage in, garbage out. You're right. You put the word in, you'll get in a time of trouble and the word will come out right when you need it. Gail Walker's on. Hi, Gail. Great to see you. Uh, Ryan has been preaching great, fully persuaded. That's right, Ryan. Uh, Debbie giving us uh, James, uh, you quoted chapter one and verse 17. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Kelly, for hanging in there with us. And, and pre she has preached the whole time. Yeah. Thank you, Kelly. Good what friends. what great insight you have. Donna giving us, uh, she's praising the Lord, giving her hands up. Debbie saying, in the name of Jesus, I receive the healing. That's yours, Debbie. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're here. We look over the comments. We agree with you in prayer. We know the power of agreement. We, we release our faith with yours. That healing is yours. Breakthrough is yours. You need us. You can always uh, message us. We look through our messages, the comments to keep you in our prayers, to lift you up. You are our partners. You yes. help us share the good news of Jesus Christ with people we can't reach, but you do. So we're so happy that you that you log on with us, that you share, that we encourage you. So when you go out today, you're ready to share Jesus quickly with those that come uh, that you come in contact with. It's wonderful every single time mm -hmm. to get in the Word of God. Yeah, it is. I love the testimonies of what God's Isn't doing. Isn't it great? And, and that was just Sunday. We don't even have to wait or go back years or weeks. God is doing miracles every day. We love to hear about them. Keep your testimonies coming. You know what I say? Miracles produce miracles. Amen. Oh, and I, every time we share them, someone else gets healed. You know, we also have people being born again continuously. We're yes. so thankful for that. Yeah. We're in a great season where we're just going to press past That's and just right. get into the deeper press. things of God. Just let God keep moving mightily. Amen. Amen. People Amen. giving their heart to Jesus. Yelena's on. She just got off work, jumped on. She receives her healing. That's right. In your knee, in your leg. We're believing God with you. That leg is whole and healed so you can get on and you're calling um, in the Lord. We love you. It's great to have people across the big sea watching with Amen. us. Amen. Mm -hmm. oh, she's on the coast there. Wow, beautiful. Well, um, we will have a new stick of the plan this Thursday. It's going to be good. It's the one Jay wanted to talk about. I think he's still upset at me that I didn't talk about it. No. I didn't mean to when it was an accident. No, all is well. Today is great. <laughs> I don't know if he's taking a nap on me or what. <laughs> <laughs> Something's happening, guys. I don't know what. Maybe someone messaged him something. I try to get his phone and put the moon on before the show, but I missed it today. <laughs> all is well. well. You know, we love you guys. We appreciate you're part of the team. You're part Absolutely. of our lives. We can't imagine life without you. Mm -hmm. And we're just really believing God for big things for you. Yeah. As you draw closer and closer to him, God never rejects his children. He's always drawing near. I, I like this statement. When you take one step towards God, he'll take yes. a thousand back towards you. He loves you so much. He's got such a great big plan for your life. Uh, you know, we love the word. Mm -hmm. Brother Hagen taught us when we were young, if you'll get thrilled with the word of God, it'll, it'll work, work for you. It'll work for you. So we just get thrilled with God's word. And so I never understand people who are who seem so spiritual and they're not excited about the word. Oh, yeah. No, and it, it it's you know, everything in life is a habit. You create a pattern, you create a habit. And people get in a pattern and a habit. I guess I'm a little heart my heart's hurting a little because of I how do we get this message into people? I mean, we meet, you know, an hour a week and you can't not everybody can meet with us every hour, every week, you know. And so, I, I, how do we get this message into people so that they live their life? You get one life to live. Live it full of joy. Yeah. Live it full of confidence yeah. in God, mm -hmm. right? The Word of God is not for yeah. somebody else. It's, it's for, for you. you. It's your covenant That's with right. God. And you have the ability to know Him mm -hmm. and experience the fullness of God. And you don't have to live beneath the benefit of that. And you don't have to live accepting every attack of the enemy against your life. Mm -hmm. But you are immovable. immovable. What, moves, what moves me? It has to be the word. Yes, what you believe. It has to be what I believe in him because his word is the absolute truth of his character mm -hmm. towards me. It's from the word that he tells me he's my father. Yeah. It's from the word that even tells me I've been born again. Yeah. It's from the word. And from that word, I now have the experience of it. So the truth is revealed in my life mm -hmm. that I am born again. The word says it. Mm 
but I've seen the results of it. Yeah. The Word says I am able to be filled with the Spirit, uh -huh. but I've experienced the results of it. I truly am filled with the Spirit of God. So that same Word that has been true is why we are not moved by anything mm. other than the Word of God. What yeah. else does the Word say about me? Oh, yeah. come on. Come well, on. that's true too. Yeah. And so... Um, I, 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 I really want to help people get off that roller coaster yeah. of, oh, God loves me. Oh, I guess God's mad at me. Oh, God oh, loves me. Oh, yeah. okay. No, it's not it's true. A place God to live. loves you. That's right. And the devil's bad every time. Yeah, <laughs> the devil's a loser. So we're believing with you. This He's isn't about Amy and I, it's about you. Mm -hmm. And we, we're, we're, we're doing what we do because we believe in you. We want to see you grow and come to know God and Ryan's, in a great big way. Ryan's saying it is a choice. You know, what do you choose, life or death? You have the choice. We choose life. No matter how down you That's feel. It, or even if you have mistakes. I was just thinking about Jonah. I mean, he totally disobeyed God. He's in the belly of a, a, a giant fish. Yet it was never too late yeah. to come to yourself. He got thankful. Poo, and his life, the Lord restored him right back to his call. You know, he had to change his mood, change his attitude. <laughs> get, get thankful. Yeah. And and when he made that shift and, and was like, oh, okay, Lord, the Lord, you know, put him right back up on the shore and said, now go do what I told you to do. No, it's great. Beth said it best. She just nailed what I was trying to say. Yeah, our rewired. Brain, our brains need renewed, right? Rewired. Rewired. By the word of God. By the word of God. And, and we have that ability. You have that ability, amen, to think like Christ. And, and Harlan, I want to brag yeah. on him. He's in the audience yeah. today. I mean, it's we're been talking a refresh, about. A refreshing to our lives. Yeah, letting the word move you. I've seen he'd come in with with the joy of the Lord. Uh, I mean, he came in, he gets filled with the Spirit of God, goes so ministers to his grandmother quickly. She's, is she 90? 80. 85. 85 years old. She gets filled with the Spirit. He just, he just turned into a minister, got excited about the Word, and it quickly, you could probably give me an amen. Is this right? It quickly started to work for you, right? Amen. <laughs> and we're so glad to have him around. It doesn't take long for the Word of God to start changing your life. It and is I'll, real. He's and it is here alive. for the Word. He's here for the but Word. But he's also here because he and I oh, are going. You got to go. It's Taco Tuesday. We're going to, we're going to Taco Tuesday. Ooh, taco, Taco, Taco Tuesday. <laughs> One dollar tacos at the Guadalajara. Do you still get your favorite dish there? Tacos El Pastor? Yeah. Absolutely. Does that really mean that pastor's tacos? Sin cebolla, <laughs> no onion, con piña with pineapple. <laughs> the pastor's tacos. Oh, mas, way. <laughs> mas cilantro, por favor. That means more something, please. Cilantro. Oh, cilantro. Oh, yeah. More cilantro, please. Oh, gosh, I'll be brushing your tongue. <laughs> 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 we need to write that down for next week. What? To find out who likes cilantro, who doesn't, right? Because oh, some question. people like cilantro, and, and other some people, people it tastes like dish soap. It right? tastes like soap. Isn't well, that funny? I don't really like it, but obviously. A little bit, a little bit. Because I think Cheddar's puts it the in there. The more just... the better for Jay. The more the better. Wow. I tell them my cilantro, but they don't believe me. I want to tell them, how do I say more, a mountain? More cilantro. A mount ma montagna? Montagna? Montaña. Montaña of cilantro. How do you say this? De. 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 Montaña de cilantro. <laughs> I'm going to draw a picture with my hands. Don't let him eat that, I'm guys. Do it. Don't let him eat that. Please don't. Con montaña no. de cilantro. <laughs> no. No mas. Say no mas. <laughs> no mas. No mas. <laughs> mas cilantro. Por favor. <laughs> don't. don't. Thank you, Angie. I'm with you. It is so good. <laughs> it does not, Deanna. You and Amy are of a different ordinance <laughs> than me. <laughs> yes, Beth. It's delicioso. Muy rico. Oh, coleslaw. Hun, you should try that. It's not cold slaw, it's coleslaw. Coleslaw. <laughs> coleslaw. Every now and again our our Kentucky roots come it out. It comes back. Don't get Nanny. me started on <laughs> Chester drawers. All the things that Nanny, <laughs> that Nanny said. <laughs> Thank you, Sheena. Thank oh, you. Oh, man, that's too funny. <laughs> Love you guys. We got a great, great, great stick with the fan, uh, with the plan family. <laughs> stick with the fam. We got a great stick with the, the frams. The frams. <laughs> with the stick with the plan family. We love you guys. We do. Have a great day. We'll be live again next Tuesday. Remember Thursday, we got a brand new stick with the plan. Thanks for sharing it, and we'll see you soon.